to Okay. Before we uh, start, let me just read from uh, a few uh, verses. This is from Daniel chapter 6. Okay. Um, Daniel chapter 6. So I just want to read a few verses. And uh, talks about the important quality that we as believers should have and uh, we as believers can have. Okay. So if you look at Daniel chapter 6 and verse. Three, it says, this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king gave thought to settling him over the whole realm. So that's what we read of him. Verse 5, then these, then these men said, meaning uh, the people who were there, the governors, the satraps. Um, so they, they said, we shall not find any charge against this Daniel, unless we find it against him, concerning the law of his God. Okay? So, so what, were, what were they saying? He is blameless in his work, in his uh, character. And so we can't find anything against him, unless we find it in the matter of his God, because they were worshipping another. So they said, we can't find anything wrong with him, unless we find then uh, verse 10, okay, Daniel chapter 6, verse 10, it says, Now Daniel knew that when the writing was signed, he uh, knew that the writing was signed, he went home and in his upper room with his windows open towards Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed uh, on his, uh, uh, and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as was his custom since early days. Okay, so it talks about how he, he prayed that day when there was a problem. But it was not a one-off thing. It was his custom since his early days. This is what he did. Then last verse, we look at verse 16. Okay. So Daniel gave, so the king gave the command, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of the lions. But the king spoke, saying to Daniel, Your God, whom you serve continually, he will deliver you. Okay, so if you look at all these verses, there's one quality or attribute that we see in Daniel, which is being consistent. Okay? Being consistent, being steadfast, meaning that he did not change because there was a difficulty, because there was, uh, uh, I mean, change his convictions, right? Or change his discipline, spiritual disciplines, because there was adversity, because there was something that was said against him or something that was a law to him. He did not change. He went on doing what he did. And he went on, his character and life was so steadfast and so excellent that his colleagues and his uh, you know, people whom they were, he was, uh, they were reporting to him, they said, we cannot find anything wrong with him unless it's in the matter of his faith. Okay. So that's something. And then, we read that he went and prayed when there was a it was a life and death matter, right? So because the king had signed this law saying that if you worship any other god, you will be put to death. So it was a life and death matter. But he still went and prayed, as was his custom since the early days. Meaning that this is what he did. Whether it was a good time, whether it was a bad time, whether it was a challenging time, this is what he did. He prayed. He did not forsake his communion or uh, you know his prayer with God, right? His spiritual disciplines. Then lastly, um, what we see in verse 16 is that the king himself notices that and he says, this God whom you serve continually. Okay? So the king notices, okay, this is a man who is excellent. I want to place him actually over, you know, uh, over the, all the kingdom. I want to put him as a response. That's what we did first verse, right? Um, uh, that king actually thought he should be given the overall responsibility of the king. So this king has noticed it. It says, this God whom you serve, the world is continually. It's not that you're sometimes on, sometimes off. 
when you are in a good mood, you serve, and in a bad mood, you do not want to say. When this God of whom you serve continually, He will deliver you. And, and, and He's not saying our God. Still, this king is not really, you know, uh, accepted or he's not following. He's saying, this God whom you serve. So he's noticed something in Daniel. He's not even made, you know, any allegiance to this God. But he's saying, you know, there's something I notice about you. This God whom you serve, continually, he will deliver you. So what an awesome testimony. Testimony from the colleagues, though it's a negative life. Testimony from the one who's, who is serving, uh, you know, in such a possible way. And so this... Um, this characteristic of being consistent and steadfast is possible for the believer. It's possible for the believer. And more so because we have the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. So what stops us? What stops us? It is we ourselves. We make a choice. If we would make a decision, <clears throat> Lord, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to serve. I'm not going to give up on this because I don't understand things. I'm not going to give up serving you because things are difficult. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I will not do this because I don't feel like it. If we would make that choice, that decision, that's going to be life, life changing for us, life changing for those around us. So why don't we just pray and ask the Lord to strengthen our resolve. If there's one thing that we can pray, we pray that Lord, Strengthen my resolve, meaning my ability to make those decisions, those tough decisions, those difficult decisions. Strengthen my will, strengthen my resolve. The second thing that we can pray is, Lord, um, let my resolve be consistent. Okay. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Lord, we pray that you would strengthen us. Strengthen us in the inner man, Lord. Strengthen us, Lord, as according to the power of the Holy Spirit. We thank you that we have so much available for us, Lord. So much you've made available. The riches, the inheritance that we have in Christ. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you that we are partakers of the divine nature. God. We thank you that we are partakers of these divine promises. And so, Lord, we ask that you would empower us, strengthen us, Lord, in the inner man, so that we will be strong in our decisions, God. You would, that you would strengthen us to make that we will be strong in our resolve to do the right thing. And Lord, we also pray that it would not be a one-off thing, but it will be consistent for day in and day out, whether we feel like it or we feel like it. The things are difficult or things are easy. But Lord, we pray that we would choose to do the right thing, or that we would choose to follow you, that we would choose to say yes to you, God, or whether we understand things we would choose to say yes to you because you know it all and you God, will take us through. So God, this morning we commit ourselves, commit the whole of this today, the whole of today into your mighty hands. In Jesus' Christ's name we pray. Amen. Okay. Uh, welcome once again those who joined us um, just now. Um, we've been studying uh, homiletics, we've been studying about preaching. Last class we looked at the um, and some of the biblical uh, examples that we see uh, about how there is preaching in the Bible. And we looked at some of the uh, some of the messages, like uh, Stephen's message, like the message that was preached by Peter um, as soon as you know the believers were filled with the Holy Spirit. So uh, we looked at some of them, and we see that yes, there is the uh, you know, this whole aspect of preaching. Now today, we're going to look at chapter 3, which is um, the glory and relevance of preaching. Okay? So first of all, we need to understand that, um, you know, uh, why are we studying this? Because times have changed. Okay? The times have changed. The way we do ministry is very different from the way it was done earlier. So, um, for example, when the message was to be preached, in a certain place, when there was ministry, it was it was always a physical travel, or it was one of the things that epistle that was written to address to instruct a particular church. Right? It was always a physical travel, and it was um, it was time consuming to go from one place to another. But they did it anyway. And today, there is the technology that is available to do things virtually. 
to do things online. And so there is so much of content that is available online, so much of you know messages and preaching and everything that is available online. So um, one of the things that we see is that there, there's a lot of uh, information. Okay? There's a lot of information that is actually hitting people. Uh, right from morning till night, there's a lot of things. So for example, what do you do the first thing that you get up in the morning? Prayer. Wonderful. <laughs> Anybody check their phones? Yes, I will your phones. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay, all the in person students saying we submit the phones. But the thing is this, right? Suppose you were at home on a holiday. Yeah. You you wake up to the alarm of the phone. Right. And then you switch off. And then, just to check that. Yeah, just to check what is there. Okay. And sometimes those messages kind of draw you in, and then you know, you, yeah, you're lost to it. Before you suddenly you realize that oh, half an hour is gone, but you know, no, but the point that I'm trying to make is that there are a lot of in there's a lot of information and there's a lot of messages that come to us through the day. Okay. Either through our friends. Either through our email, you know, maybe because of work, uh, through the you know, innumerable notifications that come, right? If you've got your notifications on, on Instagram, or Facebook, or YouTube, there are notifications coming. Okay, there's a this thing is online, or this thing is live, uh, this particular person is speaking, and so much is coming, and uh, so much so, you know, initially we were all excited. I want to follow this, follow this, follow this, and this, and that, isn't it? And suddenly, you realize, you realize that so there's a mountain of information that's falling on us. And then you just want to, you're so tired of all the information, then you just say, no, I don't want to. That's why people I see over and over again, people saying, I'm taking time off social media. And they sometimes leave a WhatsApp group, right? saying, I'll join later. It's too much, I can't handle it. Um, so we, we see that. So we are living in a society where there is over communication, too much information, information overload. In such a society, the question is, is preaching relevant? Here you are, another voice <laughs> to all the million voices with the message of truth, uh, which has the potential to cut through all that clutter. But that's the complication. That's the complexity of the society that we face today. Okay, maybe it's not so much in certain places, but definitely in an urban setting and so on. Uh, it's 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 very very prevalent. Okay, so we need to. Um, so if you are a preacher, if you are, you know, in that kind of a thing, then uh, in that kind of a context. Then you have the temptation is to do something very different so that you can cut through. Okay. So that when I say cut through, it means to so that people can actually tune in and stay. Um, or you know, people actually can uh, listen, stay on. Um, what what again, what what we notice is that people's attention span is very, very reduced. If, it, if a video is more than, I don't know, three, one minute, two minutes, three minutes, then it's, unless it's very, very compelling, people don't stay on it. Right? They either forward, and now also you have, you can watch the videos at twice the speed, one and a half times the speed. So you just watch it, you know, because you don't want to spend too much time on it. So even though the audio might sound a little weird, okay, it's okay. I just seen it, watch it. Right? So attention span. So you realize that even when you're you know, speaking to an audience, you see them drift. And every three minutes or every five minutes, you, you see that, okay, there's a drift happening. So the reality is this. That's the kind of society we are in. So the question is, is preaching relevant or is preaching irrelevant? So we face that question. Okay. So the, then the next thing uh, is that you know, it, because of technology, because of all these advances. Now maybe I'll just share the notes also. Um, so what is happening is, uh, 
So, uh, because of all the advancement, there is a tendency to rely more on technology than on the actual content. Okay, maybe if there is a video, you have a tendency to rely more on it. Maybe if there are, you know, whatever props, you know, lights, you know, etc., you know, something that enhance your actual production. Now, these are all good things. These are all good tools, right? If you use them, you know, we use a projector, we use LED, we use LED. these are all good things. These actually enhance the message. But the the, 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 the the thing it becomes when, when does it become bad or when does it become detrimental when you rely on that and not on uh, the word of God and not on the power of the Holy Spirit. Right? When we rely, when we put our dependency on that, more on that. Um, like for example, you know that music uh, does have a part, does play a part in our emotions. Okay. Uh, how do you say that? Music is a mood elevator. Right? That is why when we, whenever we go shopping, you go to any mall, there is music. You get into a lift, there is music. You get into a shop, you get into a there they are playing the music, huh? cafes. So why is there music? Have you thought of it? Why should there be music? It's make people happy and explore them. Yeah. So why why, why does the mall want to keep you happy? Why does the stay there? And why do why do they need you to stay there? Huh? Yeah, it fills the silence. Agreed. So if there's any um, like especially in the restaurant, you know, if there's an uncomfortable silence. People that you know, spoon dropping and all that, they want to cover that. Okay, then, but like Nina said, okay, they want you to stay in the mall, they want you to stay in the upstairs. keep you relaxed. But why? Yeah, that, that's the end. <laughs> Change our emotions yeah, for the better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it is, you know, it is to definitely to calm you down, it is to definitely to make you feel good. So, then whatever you're looking. You know, it, it it looks good. Hey, it's nice. You know, can I can I afford it? Of course, I think. You know, it's an act of faith. It increases your faith. <laughs> Who's your faith? Is that like, of course. And I'm sure you can pay for it. Right? So uh, it's a uh, it's a mood elevator, and it can be music can be used to manipulate. Music can be used to uh, you know, kind of mold someone because um. The, and I, I remember reading through some statistics of um, of this concert uh, by uh, again it, it's a rap concert. But the fact is that uh, throughout that concert, the message that was going out is what was violent. Okay. Just go, it's hit, you know, uh, try it. That was the message. You can imagine two hours or maybe more. That is the message that is hitting the people. And they say that as after the concert was done, people were so charged violently that they went out and they went about rioting. So much of violence outside, fights even among themselves breaking out, and, and uh, you know they were high on substances, and so um, that was it. So you see the effect of you know, music. You see the manner play to it. So the danger is this, you know, if I as a minister of God, if I use music to manipulate rather than to minister, okay, are we ministering or are we manipulating? Am I dis am I depending on music? Our bad bad? <laughs> yeah, so do we need it? You know, sometimes we see music has a power because we need. Um, is it Elijah's case? Uh, or Elisha? Uh, is there Springer? Yeah. Yeah. So bring an musician. Um, and definitely, you know, there is the aspect of the anointing being stirred up. Yeah. Very true. So we, we are aware of that and we want that. So it is with that intention in mind that we approach. Not with okay, I want a wonderful space or it has to be there. No, no. Okay, so all this is there. So uh, that's again, uh, uh, is that a dependence on the 
methods? Is there a dependence on technology if I'm going to be a teacher? Okay. So is bleaching relevant? Third one is we are living in a in a in a time where there's a there's a call or there's a move towards works. You know, let's do something about it rather than why are we talking about it? Okay. Let's do something in a sense. Instead of words, let there be words. Show me. Yeah. So. Now you must have seen in the news they can have the desktop oil movement. What, what, what? Just? Desktop oil movement. Desktop oil, huh? Desktop oil, yeah. Okay. So at this moment, essentially, what they do is just various scenarios, all are not taken to the people's attention to stop the production of oil. Because if the energy is not good for the but there are various factors to be going in that subject. You know, this people have many people who job by an oil rig and stuff like that. But so they can just uh, stop it. They do various things like they go and their yeah, live football matches, goal posts, yeah. road art pieces, you know, the things are this and how it lasts. The ways are like they have, but the thing is, all they do is try to protest on the mind about the subject. Mm -hmm. You know, there are many people like me, right? They're also, they're also like try to find a solution for that. They like, try to go talk to a scientist and talk, talk about this issue, see what uh, ways uh, you can come up with a solution for this. Like, uh, we see that we need a uh, need of power, power, right? Now, there's something called a wave energy. So, we go on, so we can harness the energy of waves, and if we just take the United States, uh, the uh, beach alone, the, the yeah, I, I, I get it. Yeah. So I get activism. Yeah. So the, the question is this, you know, uh, so we have such an audience in the communication, right? So in the, in the, in the church, wherever we are preaching, the people are, you know, people are saying, it's a good thing. I want to make a difference. Right? So in such a context is the question is, again, you know, is preaching relevant? Okay, so that's the thing. That's what we are, you know, we're talking about the relevance. So in such a context, is teaching relevant or should we just move into you know doing things right? so, the, so the answer is this you know yes there is a place of action of faith moving us to works but what really produces faith is the word right is the anointed word is the uh, spirit of god when he brings the word to us and that is what actually Gives us the revelation, gives us the faith. Okay, so both go together. But the thing is this, you know, this is what the preacher is facing. Okay, this is the this is this is the context where the preacher is facing, these are the times that the preacher is facing. So so sometimes we 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 think, you know, maybe I should not preach. Maybe it's, it's I'll just do some online thing, you know, online ministry. Who are you? I'm an evangelist online. <laughs> I'm a prophet, but I'm doing it online. Maybe we, we sometimes online can be a you know, supplement or complementing what we're doing. But the fact is that um, when we look at scripture, you know, that is what we are coming to. Right? Uh, we see that. Um, uh, let's look at First Peter chapter one. First Peter chapter one, and. Um, Verse 23. Okay. Verse 23 says, Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Okay. Born again by the incorruptible seed, which is the word of God, which lives and abides forever. And uh, in verse 25, the word, again, the word of the Lord, which endures forever. This is the word which by the gospel was preached to you, proclaimed to you, declared to you. So it is saying, you know, this, this word which endures forever, this word which is incorruptible, which is able to you know, cause you to be born again, this is what was preached to you. Now we know it is communicated in different ways, but when you look at preaching, you see that it is... Um, it is a very important and indispensable act 
this is part of the believer or the minister. Right? Um, Paul himself, okay, Paul, we know, uh, impacted uh, people, places like no other person, you know, the minister of God, no other apostle, right? Because uh, God used him sovereignly to write two thirds of the uh, New Testament right? to, to the established doctrine and, and so on. So Paul himself, you know, in places he says that, uh, you know, I I want to come and meet you face to face so that I might impart to you some spiritual gifts so that you might be established. Okay. Uh, for example, when we look at um, the Romans 1, yeah. Romans chapter 1. Um, Eleven, right? So, I, for I long to see you, that I may impart to you some spiritual gift, so that you may be established. That I is that I may be encouraged together, both with, uh, with you by the mutual faith, both of you and. Okay, so he says, I want, I long to come, and be there, and minister, so that. Um, you might be, um, um, you, know, uh, you might be strengthened. You might be established uh, because of this special gift that is imparted. Verse fifteen. So much as so as much as is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. Okay. So we see that um, uh, there is the the aspect of preaching and the Lord confirming the preaching of the word. Right. Uh, when we uh, and confirming the uh, and through an impartation of a special gift and all that happens accompanying the preaching. Okay, so so that is what uh, you know. Now today this is what we have. Tomorrow there might be even other advances in technology. There might be other things that we've never you know thought about, um, and uh, that things are happening right now. Like in, uh, for example, there's a just like how we are, you know, we have video conferencing in real time, um, like we have a screen online. Um, they're actually projecting images of you as a person, like there could be a camera and then picking it up and projecting you as a person where, you know, let's say I'm at home, but I could be here in person as a, my image is here as a 3D image or 4D yeah, holograms, right in person standing here and in the Interacting, right? So it's it, it's as good as you know, me being here. Right? And also, another thing where they can hear voice and make you as the speech language. You don't have to use your voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so you know, advances are like it's very, uh, you know, you, you can't even conceive in your mind like what is it? Not even our wildest imagination. So, so things are advancing so much, but at the same time. When we look at the word, we see that there is the relevance, there is the weightage given to the preaching of the word. So much of Paul himself says, oh, he's, he's written, he's communicated, he's established so much. Um, he's saying that, you know, that I, I'd like to preach the gospel to you also. Okay. So it's relevant. Uh, it's definitely relevant. Let's look at a few things here. A few, um, I'm on page 11, where we see that uh, our God is a God who communicates. Our God is a God who speaks. And he speaks to our heart. He speaks through uh, the written word, and he speaks through the, the word, the quickened word by the Holy Spirit. So, um, because he's a speaking God, because he's a God who communicates, so also he has created us in his image. Right? So we have been given the capacity to communicate. We are given the capacity to to speak and share. Okay. Secondly, uh, when the prophets were commissioned, you know, they were given that assignment. They were called to proclaim. Okay. Now the prophets would also do a prophetic act, but you see that they took the message and they proclaimed the message. Well, thus says the Lord. And the hand of the Lord was upon him. The word of the Lord came to the prophet, and the prophet moved and said, Thus says the Lord, and preached and declared. Okay. Uh, the Lord's earthly ministry, we see right through gospel, that he went about preaching, teaching, and healing all who came to him. 
preaching, teaching, and healing on. So um, as long as there is, you know, there are people to listen, as long as God takes us to these people who he has prepared, you know, preaching is very good. John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea. The apostles preached, um, you know, and uh, they started from Jerusalem and they went on to go. Um, but yeah, let's let's just look at uh, some uh, scriptures there. Maybe we can look at the uh, book of Acts. Acts chapter 4, verse 31. Um, okay, Acts 4, 31. This is after they prayed. Okay, uh, because of persecution, uh, they gathered together. And uh, this is uh, you know, this Peter and John have been threatened, and they come back, they pray together. Um, it says, When they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Yeah, they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Okay. So we see that the apostles, the early disciples, they, they went and preached, uh, they did so with boldness. Okay, if you look at chapter 6 and verse 4, um, it's uh, again the question of uh, the balance between doing something, okay? um, it was uh, serving tables, as we call it, so making sure that the people had enough, the widows had enough. Um, so here we see that uh, Peter making this uh, uh, declaration, right? Uh, oh, I don't know whether it's with Peter, but anyway, uh, verse 4, he says, they say that we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the Lord. We will give ourselves. Okay. So there is the serving of table. It has a place. So we will not uh, you know, do away with it, like right? saying that, okay, this is important. This is not really saying that we will not, um, we will give ourselves to preach while we, um, in, um, just one second. Um, yeah, while the uh, ministry of giving or generosity and taking care of the poor and everything happens, this will happen as well. Amen. Okay. Uh, let's look at a few other verses. Let's go to the very last chapter. So it talks about Paul. Then Paul dwelt two whole years. Um, and I'm looking at verse 13, right? Acts 28, verse 13. Then Paul dwelt two whole years in his own rented house and received all who came to him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching the things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no one forbidding him. Okay. So, so you see, right? Till the end of his ministry, he preached the gospel, uh, preached the kingdom. Okay. Um, we also see that um, God ordained it for people to preach. Okay. For example, Romans chapter 10, verse 14, verses 14 and 15. Okay. So Paul asked these questions, right? Says, How then shall they fall on him? in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Okay. So how shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How can they believe if they have not heard? And how can they hear if they have not heard to a preacher? Plus 15, and how shall they preach unless they are sent? Okay, so this gives a logical, you know, um, a few statements there, questions there, rhetoric uh, statements there. So we see that, okay, preaching was very, very uh, part of it. And then it's also God ordained. And uh, we see Paul writing to the Roman church and saying that this is what, this is how it is. This is people need to be sent, people need to preach, people need to hear, and then people will be saved. Okay, so uh, when it comes to the Great Commission, we saw the Lord Jesus also being saying that go preach the gospel to. And we take the gospel of preach it to every preacher. Okay. So, um, so it is part of 
who we are or who we are called to be. Okay. Now, we might be called in, uh, in different realms. Not everybody is called to preach from the pulpit. Okay. But we can actually preach the gospel one on one, we can preach the gospel be in a smaller group, and we can preach the gospel to thousands. Maybe that is our call. But the fact is that preaching is inbuilt into the tenets of Christianity. You know, just as much as uh, people ask, right? Um, people from other states say, why, why are you guys converting? Why are you going? And why are you doing this? And you know, why can't you just accept things as they are? Why should you go on converting? And that's when um, you know, I have to share and say, hey, this is part of This is part of the thing. That is, this is something good. This is something life changing. It's a matter of life and death. So this is what it is. You know, we need to, there is laid upon us the, uh, the, the commission to go and share. But if you look at it, at the core of it, it's something life changing. It's something that saves people's lives. So why not? Um, why not? Jesus says, uh, people are heading towards um, eternal damnation. People are heading towards uh, heading towards uh, you know people getting killed. Or, we would in the natural. We would. I remember you know going down. This, this is not as drastic as people getting killed, but uh, I'm just going you know down the road and and, and there's guys who are coming this side you know, uh, on the bike saying police police. <laughs> okay, the thing is they are not wearing helmet. And uh, the police are there checking. They're checking for helmet. They're checking for uh, license, insurance, whatever. So they are coming, and they are, and they, they are doing a good thing. You know, they are saying, okay, police, police checking, checking is happening, and they are going on the wrong side. Okay, they're just telling all the guys, police, police, and and people are stopping. They're coming to the side. Uh, they are coming. They are also taking a good time. And police check. Okay, when for us, such a, something very trivial, when we go out of the way to tell people. There's something happening. You know, I don't want you to get caught. How much more is for a good cause? How much more? Okay. So it's 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 a natural thing. You know, it's a, the natural human tendency is to share. Hey, I found something good. The natural human tendency is to say, share. You know, this is this is not good. This is not you know. and that's why WhatsApp works. People we'll say people think that hey, I'm doing a very noble job. Let me forward to everyone. You know, I received something. I don't know whether it's true or not, but let me sounds true. Let me send it. Uh, that's how this works. That's how Facebook works. And people want to share good memories and you know, add so and so network. The whole thing is built on that. People's desire to share what is good, what is bad, you know, what you've experienced with others. So it's inbuilt. It's 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 human nature. And how much more when it comes to uh, something that is of eternal, uh, eternal value. Right? So preaching is uh, part of a very important uh, pillar, uh, very important or central to uh, our faith in God. Okay. Um, I don't think this, there should be any questions. But if you want to share anything uh, in addition to it, please go ahead. Um, with how are we are not the question is it prevalent in the uh, for the 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 when you look at it, he was actually talking about for us personally, nationally, by Pedagon, but by our personal existence spiritually, we need the Quran and therefore to please to share. Yeah. Um, yeah. Any thoughts online students? Okay. Okay, so let's look at chapter four okay, about the uh, about the person, about the messenger, or the preacher. So, one of the things is that we need to understand is we cannot separate the message from the messenger. Okay. 
So a big part of the message is the messenger itself. So what do we mean by that? They say you can't separate the message from the messenger. Or the messenger himself is the message. What do we mean by that? Hmm. So one's life is a message. Okay. But PG should be living it also. PG should be living it. Yeah. 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 Mm. So the message has to be lived out. Yeah. Or, you know, see, the thing is, uh, when you go to a doctor, and the so doctor says, okay, something is wrong. So the doctor will prescribe some medicines. Okay. But the doctor will not take the same medicines himself. <laughs> right? So, so many times, the preacher is like that, okay. This is what is wrong with you. I'm prescribing it. Go do this. What about you, doctor? No, forget it. You know. <laughs> so the doctor is always prescribing things. Okay, this is what you need to do. But when it comes to my life, so many times uh, we can live, if you're not careful, we can actually do the same. So we can become professional preachers. This is what, you know, this is what is, this is what the word demands, or this is what I, I want to tell the people. You get into a kind of a mode where you are always telling people how to do it, how to live right. This is the good thing. This is what you need to do. But when, it, when it comes to you personally, as the messenger, there's a disconnect. Um, there's a so much of a disconnect that uh, we lose the authenticity, and, and it's it's very easy for people to find out. Yeah. I used to I used to go for a pastor of Francis here, right here. I used to go there, the first um, portrait I had mm. was a bit overweight and God uh, he used to teach us basketball class. They, 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 of course, he knew how to play basketball. Mm -hmm. the basketball. But the thing is, like, um, if he himself is not looking straight, they doesn't give us uh, people much encouragement to go on. So. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, we had other coach for chat group. He was a really fit guy, actor. I used to play with us. In fact, he used to beat us two, three times uh -huh. over. So, I mean, that gives like a motivation. I think that can give you beat him also. True, very true. So, you see that, okay, he is actually living out. Yeah. So, there's some. So, so next time when he says, hey, do it like this, yeah. you know that maybe in he knows what he's saying. Fact, uh, he will also uh, he will tell what to do next in drills and all, and he will show how to do it. In fact, you do good when you're doing it. Mm. Yeah. So that, that makes a big difference. Yeah. Right? Uh, when the person does it. Yeah. So so that's why, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting, right? When you look at, um, um, I don't know if it's Acts chapter one or two. Yeah. Look at Acts chapter one, verse one. Okay. The former account I made with Theophilus of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Well, that's how Luke records it. The former account I made uh, of Theophilus of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. So um, the Lord lived an example and he taught. So same thing goes for us. That we cannot be disconnected from the message, that we cannot be just consultants giving expert advice, but we need to live it. We need to uh, live the message. Okay. This is what um, uh, Paul says, Timothy, 1 Timothy 4, verse 16. Let's read that. In the, in the Good News Bible, it just says like this um, Watch yourself and watch your teaching. Keep on doing these things because if you do, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. Okay. So let's look at uh, any other version. Can somebody can read out? Yeah. Yeah. Let me read from um, um, 
Yeah, NKGV is, uh, yeah, you can read it from here. Yeah. Take me to yourself and you do the talking. Continue in them for in doing this, you will say both yourself and those who do Yeah. So you think they keep, first of all, he's saying that just be careful about yourself, how you live. Then he says, take it to yourself and to the doctor. Okay, so about the belief, about the teaching, okay. okay but then he says, well, take it to yourself. How are you? How are you living? What are you doing? Take it to yourself and to the doctor. Continue with them. For doing this, you will save both yourself and those who should be. So, um, so one of the first things that really you know, uh, we need to establish or be convinced of is 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 this truth or this question you know am i called to do this okay. because if, if you know that okay i'm called and i'm commissioned to do it then we need to take it up very seriously but if there's a question about am i called to do this you know can i am i supposed to be doing it then our efforts also will be in the same manner, we, we won't be, we'll be we'll be very unsure. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you know that we are we are called, then there's a sense of conviction that comes with the call. Okay. So the question is this: How do we know that we are called to preach? Okay. So there is the general call that God has for us that all of us are called to preach the gospel. Okay. All of us are called to preach. Okay. We could be in different realms. Of influence, meaning it could be uh, you know where God has placed us. Okay? It could be the environment that He places us in. But first and foremost, we need to know that God has called each one of us. If you are a believer, you know if I'm a believer, then I should I I need to be convinced that God has called me to preach. Okay, like when we say preach, immediately picture comes of pulpit stage. Okay. <laughs> the extended hand. <laughs> but the thing is, preaching is just proclaiming. Understand that. Proclaiming, declaring, right? herald, crying out, um, and uh, calling attention to the truth. So, so, with that understanding, now we know that, okay, I'm also going to preach. Again, when we think of preaching, we will think of, of personality types. I'm not an extroverted person. I'm not into public speaking. Or I'm I'm a, I'm a creative person, I'm a quiet person, I I'm, I'm not much into meeting with people, etc. That's another thing. So the Bible that does not say anything about personality types or everything. Saying that only the bold I'm sorry, only the extroverted and always talking and those kind of people are called to please no. It's for everyone. Was talkative, non-talkative, and in fact, the quiet ones are really very, very effective because when they speak, people actually are like, "Wow, this person is saying something. Let me take note of this." And whatever words they speak, they are very thoughtful. They are careful. Like some of the quiet ones, and they speak so. So it doesn't talk about personality type at all. So irrespective of whatever personality type you are, okay, meaning you might say, uh, actually I, I don't, I don't feel like talking to people all the time, or I don't, and it could be a mix, mix of being extroverted or introverted. Um, whatever it is, all of us can, and all of us are. Born. Okay. So the difference is this to. Which sphere of influence am I called? Well, that's the question. That's the real question. Right? What am I called to? What is my calling? And uh, where am I called to preach? And what kind of capacity am I called to uh, preach or serve? Right? Now, that is something that is between us and God. Okay. So, okay, so we'll look at that uh, in the next class. And also some of the qualifications that are required. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I should say that, that well, those qualifications are the general qualifications of a believer. Okay, so uh, but particularly when it comes to preaching, okay, what are those qualifications? Okay.
fine. Okay, we'll stop here. God bless. Have a great day.